Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com. This is part five of our coded UI video series. So in this part, we're going to talk about understanding UI map files of coded UI test. So in last part, we discussed how to record code using coded UI test builder and how coded UI test builder generates the UI map. We also discussed little about UI map with UI map.cs and UI map.designer.cs file. So in this part, we're going to talk UI map in greater detail. So UI map.design.cs in Code UI test builder automatically generates a couple of class files or otherwise called as UI maps. So UI maps are more like object repository in QDP and name mapping features in test complete as we already discussed. So all the methods, classes and properties created with UI map.design.cs files are automatically generated. Hence, any change made in the UI map.design.cs file will be deleted once new recording of the code is done via Coded UI Test Builder, which we already discussed in the last part. So, let's get into Visual Studio and have a deep dive into UI map.design.cs file. Let's flip back to Visual Studio. So, this is the same project which we worked in the last video. So, as you can see here, it has a lot of references, and some of the most important references are the namespaces which we are interested in is the visual studio dot testing tool dot ui test dot extensions and Microsoft dot visual studio dot testing tools dot ui test dot win controls so this is very very important for us since we are dealing with a Windows applications right here so this win control will actually has the classes to identify the Windows controls for testing the applications. So to identify the Windows controls. So this namespace will help us for that. So if you see the UI testing has also got some other controls as well. Just click it. You can see there is an HTML control. So this is HTML controls which will be used for dealing with HTML controls in the web applications. There is also J script which will be used for identifying an operation in JavaScripts and there is a win control which works with Windows controls and WPF control is used for work WPF controls of an applications. All right, just remember that we also discuss about coded UI supported technologies in part three. So if you just want to recollect that, just go back and watch part three of this video series. You can understand what are the different kinds of technologies that coded UI test supports. All right, I'm just gonna save this as of now. And there is one more reference here, which is called Microsoft.VisualStudio.TestingTools.UITesting.Keyboard. So this keyboard actually deals with your actual physical keyboard. So it, so whatever data that you enter, so this keyboard class will perform the operation for that. So it provides the static method for performing the automated keyboard actions, and also the mouse. So it provides the static method for performing mouse actions in user interface test. All right, so we're creating a reference for these two namespaces. All right, and also there is a mouse button. So we'll use for performing some operation in the forms. All right, if you go down a little, you can see there is a generated code attribute for this UI map. So this is an auto-generated code, which is automatically generated for this particular UI map CS. right? So it is decorated with that particular attribute. And here comes our actual method, the addition operation. And as you can see here, there are some variable declarations for all the controls, like the calculator title bar, and there is a button. So it's button eight, I think, and it is button nine. So we pressed 89 plus 23 and we also hit equals so the same thing has been recorded here. You can see it is for button 8 Oops And it's for button 9 and this is for addition and this is for button 2 This is for button 3. All right, and this is for equals This is how it identifies these objects. So all these buttons are actually coming from a another control called UI item window. So where is this UI item window exist actually? 
So you can see all these relationships of this particular controls in a graphical user interface. If you double click this UI map dot UI test, just double click this. You can see there is a user interface for this particular UI map. Right? And you can see whatever operations we performed, the same is also listed along with its relationships. So if you can see here, this is the calculator window. It is coming from this UI map class, and this is somehow it should be a class file. If you just go back to the properties here, you can see its friendly name is calculator, and its identification is UI calculator window and it has some collections of search configuration and there is a search property. Just leave this as of now because we will discuss about search configuration and its property in greater detail in upcoming videos of this video series. All right, so there is a title bar and there is a window, item window, and within this item window, there is a button. Similarly, there is one more item window and there is a button, nine. So why don't we just highlight this UI item window and see what this item window is actually is. So I'm going to just click this control and I'm going to highlight this using locate the UI control. If I hit this, can you see that? It's locating my control there. Great. But it's directly locating my button rather the window. So what is this actually means? So let's go back to the UI mapper designer.cs file. Just right click this UI item window. And if you go to this definition, you can see this is a UI item window. And this UI item window has got a property with get. And it, it says that if this dot MUI item window is equal to null, then set this and return this window. All right, so what this UI item window actually is and where it is coming from, if I again go to this definition, you can see it is actually a class, which is automatically generated. And here, here it has created automatically a class called UI item window, and it is extending from a win window means it is inheriting from a win window class so win window is nothing but win window windows window so since we are working with the window application here it is actually extending all the windows control of an application using win window so this is the base class for this particular window so what is the base class of win window if i just right click and go to definition you can see this window is actually coming from win control so win control is the base class for all the controls but if you right click this win control you can see ui test control is actually the base class for all the controls so ui class ui test control does not have any classes so this is how the hierarchy is so ui test control so the relationship is like this so ui test control and underneath UI test control, there are a lot of technologies. It can be win control or it can be or HTML control or WPF control, whatever it is. And underneath this win control, you will have the win window, win button. Win radio and whatever you name it. So all these controls sits under this win control. Similarly for HTML control, you'll have HTML window, HTML button, HTML radio, etc. Similarly for WPF control. So this is the hierarchy of the objects classes and their relationships. Right? Great. So let me close this. So I'm again back to the UI item window. So here you can see there is a constructor which says public the class name and it is passing a UI test control as the search limit container to its base class. 
So what is this search limit container? So this is nothing but the search property. So it is trying to send the search property to its base class. So if you see the search properties here, it is win property win window dot property name dot control ID is equal to 138. So this UI item window is being identified using this number 138 as a control ID. And it's also adding the calculator as its title. All right, so we'll talk about this UI item window and object identification in greater details in upcoming video series. So as of now, just remember that this is how the objects are being identified. So if I go back here a little bit, so it is coming from this particular UA item window, right? And let's see what this button is actually. If I again go to definition, this button is again set to as a property as win button. So you see here, this is the class win button here. It's not a win window. So this is a win button. This is a button control. It has a button class win button. And it has again some search properties. Again, the search properties come in here, which means in order for the control to be identified, we are using the search properties here. So there's a search properties and within search property, we're passing, we're identifying the control using its name is equal to eight. And again, it's adding the title as calculator. All right, similarly, if we go back here, there is a UA calculator window. If I again go to the definition, you can see this is coming from UA calculator window. Again, I think you should have inherited from win window. See, it has again created a win window and it has again some of the name as calculator and it has a class name called calc frame. Great. So this button is identified using this kind of relationships. So it has a UI calculator window. So this is nothing but the UI map class file. So it is the UI map. And under UI map, there is a UI calculator window. And within UI calculator window, we have a UI item window. And within UI item window, we have all these buttons, whatever button it is. All right, if you go back to the UI map here, you can see the same structure. UI map, UI calculator window, UI item window, and the button. Right? So this is how the code is being designed here. And in order for, and the same thing is being followed for other controls as well. So if you see the addition operation, how this has been identified, just go to definition, its search property is add. So how is this been identified? Again, if you use the crosshair, you can identify it. So why don't we try that out? Right click it. And if I use code by test builder, and if I use this crosshair to identify this add, you can see it has the name add. Now this is the search property for identifying this control. And there are a lot of properties as well, right? Let me close this code of test builder. All right, go back to this method once again. So these controls are first identified using its search properties, and then using mouse dot click. Since we are just going to click the controls in the application under test, which is nothing but our calculator, we are using mouse dot click. We're not using any keyboard operation here so it's just mouse operation so mouse dot click of ua calculate title window and then there is a mouse dot click of the button eight and there is a button nine click and then we're hitting the add and then we're hitting two three and we're hitting equals so this is the operations that we are doing and you can see there is a new point of 82 comma 33 is nothing but the coordinates of your screen so based upon the coordinates you are doing it so your the, your next question is what if the coordinate changes whether it deals with the coordinates of the controls of course not you can just delete this and probably if i hit alt i can do this then if i type like this 
all right so i have removed all the coordinates right now and even if i run this test if i save it and if i run this test once again you can clear this thing and if i run this test you can see that it still performs as expected right so coordinate doesn't matter so even the coordinates are not there it still works but again as you can see here i have changed the codes in my ui map.designer.cs file so what if i try to record some operations let's say i'm going to record uh, a button 7 right so just so let's go back just remember this we have changed this particular code right so now i'm going to the code ui test i'm right clicking it and all my right now my intention is to record number seven i'm just going to add this into ui map so i'm going to call this code ui test builder and i'm just going to add this seven right so it will be shown right here so it also shows the hierarchy of this control and you can see there is an option called add control to the ui control map so if you click this button the control the newly added control will be automatically added to your ui map right so why don't i just add this i'm just going to, I'm just going to click this add so the certain control has been added to the ui map all right so it seems like it has been added right now so once this is added we need to regenerate the code so for that i'm going to click this generate code and it says that there there is no new method required so code will be only generated for the changes to the ui control map so i'm going to hit generate so it's going to append all the changes to my existing test method so i'm going to hit generate so it seems like the code has been generated so i'm going to close and now if I go back to my uamap.designer.cs file, seems like all the changes which are we made is gone. Of course, we have not made or added the seven button right here, but still all the controls or all the changes which are we made, like removing the, the point method from this mouse or click is all reverted back. This is the auto generation feature of uimap.designer.cs. So anything you change right here is all gone. Right? So that's it guys. So this is what is uimap.designer.cs file is all about. And you can also see that the uimap.designer.cs is automatically generating us like I think just for uh, five different operations. It has generated us around 470 different lines of codes. So it is all automatically generated. Again, any change made to this particular file is all created back. Just keep this in mind. The next video, we will discuss about assertions using Coda UI test builders in greater detail. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.